All right, you know what that means. Neil Ratner, Rock Doc here with a story. Okay, so this past week we celebrated what would have been George Harrison's 76th birthday. And today I thought I would tell you about the first time George played a gig in the States and it wasn't when you think it was. Now, <laughs> we all know that the Beatles first arrived in the U.S. on February 7th, 1964. But what many people don't know is that George had visited the States months before in September 63 to visit his sister Louise and her husband Gordon, who had emigrated to the States and were living in rural Benton, Illinois. Now, the trip was great for George who already was dealing with the hassles of Beatlemania in the States, <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> Sorry, shrooms. Jumped up. Shroomy, say hello to everybody. Okay. <laughs> so the trip was great for George, who already was dealing with the hassles of Beatlemania in the UK. But in the States, he could come and go as he pleased, moving freely with total anonymity. Now, George and Louise even spent several happy nights camping at the Shawnee National Forest. And George was mesmerized by the waitresses on roller skates at the local burger joint. All right. So Louise introduced George to her friend Gabe McCarty, an employee at the local dry cleaner who also worked nights in a band called the Four Vests. And McCarty became Harrison's guide for much of his stay in Benton. Gabe took George to the local record store, and according to Harrison... I bought Booker T. D.M.G.'s first album, Green Onions, and I bought some Bobby Bland and all kinds of things. He also purchased a record called Got My Mind Set on You by James Ray, which he would cover almost 25 years later. All right. Now, the Beatles were virtually unknown in the States, and when George asked the clerk if they had any Beatles records, all he got back was a blank, confused stare. Harrison decided to remedy the situation by bringing his own copy of the Beatles' new single, She Loves You, to the local radio station. Now, 17-year-old DJ, Marsha Schaefer, dutifully played the tune and was sort of impressed by the song, but more impressed by the 20-year-old Harrison. According to Schaefer, he was unusual looking. He dressed differently than the guys here. He was very soft-spoken and polite. Later, she conducted Harrison's first stateside interview, which would be printed in her high school newspaper. And when asked about his favorite things, George replied, Small blondes, driving, sleeping, Eartha Kitt, eggs and chips, and Alfred Hitchcock movies. <laughs> now, while in the States, George was determined to buy a new American-made guitar. So he, along with McCarthy and his four best bandmate, Vernon Mandrell, traveled 40 miles to Fenton's, to Fenton's music store, where Harrison paid $400 for a Rickenbacker 425 solid body. George wasn't crazy about the red fire glow finish, so he had it painted black to match John Lennon's guitar. <laughs> and that guitar remained in George's onstage arsenal for about a year until it was replaced by the more famous Rickenbacker 360 12-string prototype the following year. Now that he had a new guitar, George needed a place to play it. So McCarty and Mandrill invited Harrison to sit in at their upcoming gig at the VFW Hall in El Dorado, Illinois. <laughs> and that Saturday, September 28th, the Four Vests welcomed the Elvis of England to the stage. And although George had also jammed at Fenton's Bocce Ball Club and on the sales floor of Fenton's music store, this would be the first real performance by any of the Beatles in the United States. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> now, Harrison had given the band a few Beatle records, but they decided to stick to the classics. Roll Over Beethoven, Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, Carl Perkins' Matchbox, and Hank Williams' Your Cheatin' Heart. Now, no one in the crowd, virtually no one in the crowd, knew who George was or really knew much about anything about the Beatles. But his performance with the band was a major success, with the crowd clapping their hands and stomping their feet to every song. Now, I'll tell you a funny story. After the 40-minute set with Harrison, 
a guy from the crowd came up to George and said, you know, with the right breaks, you could really go places. <laughs> now, George had a great time, and the experience was so enjoyable that Harrison vowed to return to the VFW with his own band sometime the next year. And, of course, that never happened. But it was a trip that George never forgot. All right, George Harrison coming to the States before the Beatles. How cool was that? All right, so... That's my story for today. Everybody have a great rest of the weekend. We're expecting some snow here tonight. Don't know what the weather is where you are, but uh, stay warm, stay cool, depending on where you are. Have a great rest of the weekend, and I'll probably join you sometime this week for another story. I gotta say it though, you know, my book, Rock Doc, available on all formats at Amazon, and also on my website, www.neilratner.com. On the left, buy the book. I'll autograph it any way you want. All right, that's it for me for today. Have a great rest of the weekend, as I said, and hopefully I'll see you during the week. All right, Neil Ratner, Rock Doc, one more time. Out for now. Have a great one. See you soon. Bye.